This is example number three, and we will find an equivalent spring constant. This is the problem number 1.8 from our textbook. So consider a system of two springs that, are, that have stiffness 1, K1, and stiffness 2, K2, arranged in parallel. The rigid part to which the two springs are connected remains horizontal when F is equal to zero, but as soon as we apply F, there is a displacement and a rotation of the bar. And we want to find uh, equivalent spring constants that relate that displacement with the force F. As soon as we apply a force, there is a displacement of the bar. So if this is our initial position, we will have a displacement which involves also a rotation of the bar. So let's name this quantity x1, which is the deflection of the first spring, and this quantity x2, which is the deflection of the second spring. And where I apply the first x, f, I will call that x. That's the one that we want to relate to the force f. So we have the two forces of the springs, and we want to make this equivalent to a system that will have only one spring with an equivalent constant of stiffness. So that's what we want to find. And that force will be equals to the constant, equivalent constant time the displacement. So we will apply the equations of equilibrium. We have to understand that we have a system that is moving but only for comparison sports to our original system and the system, our equivalent system, we will set it up to zero and we will make it equals to both systems. This is the first equation. Give me a relation between F1 and F2 and the force that I'm applying with F1 equals to K1X1 and F2 equals to K2X2. I will take a moment about one end of the bar to relate, uh, to further relate F1 and F2 to F. So if I name the uh, end, left end A, and I know L1 and L2, I can get the moment and I say that L times, L1 times F plus L1 plus L2 times F2 is equals to zero. So I have that a relation between F2 and if, and with the equation above, I can also find a relation with F1 and F. So I will find that F1 is equal to L2, F times over L1 and L2. Now I will have find a displacement relation. So how does that tilt and displace at the same time, right? So I will find a relation between x1, x2, and x. By similar triangles, I can say that x2 minus x1 over L1 plus L2 is equals to x minus x1 over now I do some algebra, right? The denominator of one side goes to the numerator of the other side, and I multiply all the variables, and we'll have some terms that will cancel out. This term and this term. And now I have an expression that relates x with x1 and x2. Let me write it here. So I, I will call this number, equation number three. I will combine now the relations that I have for the forces with the one that I have for the displacement because we want to get a relation between force and displacement. What I will do is substitute x2 and x1 by f1 and f2 over the respective case. So x2 in this case will be f2 over k2 and in the next term x1 will be equals to f1 over k1. 
Now I can further substitute F2 by the expression that is related to F. So I will have L1 and L2. Now as you see, L1 becomes square and the denominator is also square. Now F over K2. Now I will do the same with the next term. And those become square and I have F over k1. I will now pull out the force which is uh, common for both terms and I have to copy all the first term and the second term and I get my common term for everything multiplied by f. As you see now, if I invert what I have in the bracket, and do a little bit of algebra again, I get one expression multiplied by the displacement. And as you see, what I have inside the bracket becomes the equivalent constant of my spring. So in summary, I related the forces and I related the displacement. And then I was able to find the relation between the force and the displacement by a constant of a spring.